The European Championships came to a close this past Sunday and as someone who's now watched six of these tournaments in my football fandom lifetime, if you want my honest assessment, it was average as f which some people actually forget doesn't mean it was bad because despite the goals and excitement heavily drying out as early as the third round of group games or something there was still actually games with genuine quality even towards the end however this reminds me please keep in mind that this list isn't just simply ranking all 24 teams from worst to best we have the actual tournament to give us those answers this list is ranking the teams from most impressive to least and therefore the primary factor that will be used in this list to judge these sides is the concept of expectation versus reality aka how well did they do compared to how well they were expected to do aka how well did they do with the players and resources available to them but also bear in mind by the way that's the primary factor not the only factor cuz this list will also consider a collection of secondary factors including how far they actually went in the tournament their game to game consistency which ties into how well did they do what they set out to do as well as various other tidbits necessary you can never really have too many tiebreakers either way this is all 24 teams from your row 24 ranked from least impressive to most let's roll on Number 24, Poland. Fun fact, this was the first Euros tournament in 32 years where none of the participating teams finished on zero points with the lowest total of one tallied by four bottom place sides with... IMO, the most disappointing of them being Poland. Cause well, more on them later, but while the other three sides ranged between being tournament football babies, having managerial issues in the build up to the event, or just being eternally shit, Poland were a decently equipped side with bags of experience who fielded a couple of big names, which includes the main Barcelona centre forward. Yet, their only point came in the last game, by which point their opponents from that day were all but through. 23, Scotland. They couldn't get out of the group stages when they had Hansen, Strachan, Sunes, Dalglish. No straight thinking and rational folk expected them to do so now when they're putting their hopes on Scott f***ing McTominay. Low expectations going in, low output coming out. 22, Croatia. Well, there are two ways to look at this. On the one hand, this shouldn't really be a surprise since father time waits for precisely no one. And while the Croatian average age may not be that high, the players who make up the core of the team have certainly had a few miles between them. On the other hand, a team that finished minimum third place in the past two World Cups bowing out as the worst performing third placed group stage team in this tournament. Well, on the surface, it's pretty hard to overlook that. And in case you haven't caught on by now, it is solely on the surfaces of each side this video will touch on. Curse your stupid little attention spans. 21. Czech Republic. Possibly the best example of the importance of momentum that this tournament provided us with. Because you see, in the first 70 or so minutes of their first game, the Czech Republic were doing a very good job. They made it through the qualifiers by being a dogged defensive team that were hard to beat, and they executed that very game plan pretty sweetly in the first hour or so against Portugal, even going ahead at one point with a banger. However, one cruel on goal later, it just began going downhill, and best believe, that hill was steep. 20. Serbia So as far as bottom place teams go, these guys were basically the antithesis of Czech Republic. Cause, while well, for the first half or so in their first game they were absolutely awful, once they began settling in, in the match against England, they began settling in, in the tournament itself. And following that narrow defeat to one of Euro 2024's hot favourites, Serbia went on to earn decently hard fought draws against Slovenia and Denmark, both sides who were considered stronger than them on paper. And although they did ultimately finish fourth as most expected, the difference was certainly more margins than miles. 19. Hungary Ever since they reburst onto the tournament scene 8 years ago, be it how far they went in 2016 or the nature of their performances in 2021, Hungary seemingly never failed to positively surprise us during Euro time. But just not this time. Cause while they were quite a stretch away from being terrible or anything, even managing to nick a win in the final minutes of the last game, for their own standards, they were mediocre at best and unnoteworthy at worst. 18. Albania. They came out all guns blazing, scored the fastest goal in the history of the tournament and went toe to toe with every single opponent in the group of death. And while their lack of a win does prevent them from ranking any higher on this list, it was really a shame that Albania couldn't grace us with their presence for any longer. Good try, great vibes, goated spirit. 17. Ukraine. Well this was f***ing weird. 
So not only did Ukraine finish with at least twice as many points as any other bottom side team, even amongst the third place teams there were none with more points than them. And well, I guess that demonstrates the importance of not starting a tournament f***ing half asleep. And while they gave it a mighty go once they did wake up, coming back to edge out Slovakia and holding on to a point against Belgium's olden generation, in the end this all turned out to be nothing but attempts at damage control. Cause I'd we'd unfortunately later go on to find out that damage Damage was truly done on day one. 16. Italy So in general, Italy in major tournaments during my lifetime have either been amazing or piss poor. And honestly, I'd be lying to you if I said I was the only one who's caught on to this. But this is the thing, cause to be fair to the Atsuri, they obviously heard those criticisms loud and clear and proved the naysayers wrong by basically having the most average tournament in the history of life. A second place group stage finish with a win loss and draw each, the win being via a narrow comeback and the loss being via an unfortunate own goal before then going on to be knocked out in the round of 16. I don't think it's possible to get more mid than that, fair play fam. 15. Denmark Not much to say here to be honest, Denmark just seemed to match the performance level of their opponents in each game. They were okay against Slovenia, up their levels against England and then came back down versus Serbia, but then were handed the unfortunate draw of the host in the last 16 and despite actually performing well for most of it and even technically going ahead at one point with a goal that was eventually disallowed for a fairly mediocre team, Germany so soon was a step too far. 14. Belgium and I probably have even less to say about them. In fact, you know what, I'll just sum it up in one sentence. A sentence that will accurately sum up not just Belgium's Euro 2024, but pretty much the entirety of the last decade or so. Not bad at all, but not at all what we expected. 13. Slovakia Now given that Slovakia, a country that's far from being a giant footballing nation, beat Belgium and were minutes away from reaching the quarters, I guess some of you may have been expecting me to rank them higher than this. So why did I only put them at 13? Cause I expected them to do well. Don't forget, I watched these guys in a couple of games during the qualifiers. I knew how tough they were going to be. Though I'd be lying if I said I expected them to push England that far. But let's face it, that was only partly cause of how good they were. If you know what I mean. 12. Romania Another side that were undone due to a disruption in their momentum. Starting the tournament 100 miles per hour, with Stanchu scoring one of the goals of the tournament en route to a 3-0 drubbing of Ukraine, the Romanians just had the misfortune of conceding very early on in the next game and from that point on, the vibes just didn't hit the same, ultimately being outclassed by another Dutch speaking side the following round. 11. Slovenia Ah, the only team in this tournament to cloud my judgement. Reason? I judged them from watching them against England. So it's technically England that clouded my judgement. Yeah, that sounds more right. Man, I shouldn't be judging England games. I'm far too emotional. So yeah, after 3 draws out of 3 in the group phase, Slovenia truly proved against Portugal in the second round why they may have been the best defensively organised team in the tournament. In the end, only bowing out on penalties. And while I'd usually say that's just pure luck, I'm sorry but something has to be said about just how sh** all of the spot kicks were. <laughs> Bruh, come on. But still, the props to Diogo Costa too, of course. And speaking of whom, 10. Portugal. Another team for whom my expectations were different than most, cause in a situation where most just looked at the names and expected them to blitz past most sides, I knew that Portugal's philosophy was based around little risk and long spells of possession. And given the opponents they came across, it all went pretty much the way I expected. And yes, that may sound surprising to you given that this was a stacked lineup who bowed out in the quarters, don't forget they only bowed out on pens against one of the pre-tournament's favourite in a game they basically dominated for two hours. It's a game of margins at the end of the day. Also watch this for more. 9. Georgia Look, I know I said I'll only judge on the surface in this video, but let's face it, your surface is probably higher than mine. I'm calling you dumb. So if you judge from your surface, Georgia making it to the last 16 of their very first major tournament probably warrants them a higher place. Well, let's look at it a little deeper, i.e. my surface. Number 1. They were outplayed in every game bar 1, the meaningless one, speaking of which. Number 2. Their only victory came against a second string Portugal side who only even and turned up that day to try and get Ronaldo to score. But don't get me wrong, that's far from disappointing. Hell, it's impressive as all f like fam, the Portugal side they beat had at least two dudes that were older than the country of Georgia itself. And let's not forget, they only even fell to eventual winners. What a story, fam. Eight. France. 
Uh, yeah, so I feel like I can't really rank them any lower than this since they somehow made it to the semis, but yeah, man, disappointing. Because look, Kylian Mbappe for me is the best player in the world when he's at his best, but not only was he far from his best this tournament, but for a team so filled with talent from top to bottom to have such over-reliance on one individual is, I am oh, not the way to go. 7. Germany Not the strongest host side we've ever seen, and far from the strongest German side we've ever seen, but still though they had some exciting young talent in their books, played some really good stuff particularly in the opening game against Scotland and this is now the third team in a row that met this fate, only bowed out to eventual winners. 6. Switzerland A classic case of overachieving from the serial tournament overachievers. And this isn't even necessarily because of the results they achieved. I mean don't get me wrong, not losing a single game after having played all Germany, Italy and England is impressive as it is, but when you consider the energy in their play and and the game to game excitement they brought each game, they probably deserve to go further than they actually did. Well certainly further than the lads that knocked them out. And on that note, 5. England <sighs> Look man, when it comes to England and their tournament, I don't really know where to begin. So instead I'll start with something I do know how to do and let's face it, I probably do it better than anyone around. Comparisons! So funnily enough, this England team actually reminded me of certain European champions of the past. Can you guess which one? Greece 2004 seems like the obvious option but nope! Far from it brother. Cause not only did these guys have a significantly harder route to the final, but let's not get it twisted, they knew exactly what they were doing. <laughs> no fluke about this shit. But you see, we were actually a lot like Portugal in 2016. We were largely unsettled, but were given the luck of the draw, and still made hard work of the withdrawals, penalty shootouts, as well as the big names getting us out of shit with one-off moments. Except there were two huge differences. Number one, well, obviously we didn't win the cup and they did. And number two, our squad was too good to play like this. Portugal had the best player in the world with a past it Nani being second in command. They only stood a chance being pragmatic and relying on Ronaldo to pull something off. Whereas we had like what? two or three of the world's top 10 players and still ended up having to scratch and claw in pretty much every game. Hmm. I don't know man. But yeah so, even as one of the firm favourites before and frankly fortunate finalists at the affair both in familiar fashion, we fall to 5th which I feel is fair mainly for those factors. F*** football. But even so, you know what, Mr Southgate, thanks for the memories. For Holland, mainly because they came out of f***ing nowhere. Like seriously, how did they manage to make the semis? And yes, I know they were in the easier side of the draw, but genuinely, I was far from confident even when they were drawn against Romania. Because while they do have a few talented individuals, the Dutch haven't really gelled together as a team in a major tournament since like, what, the 2014 World Cup? That's saying a lot. Not to mention they were kind of f***ed over with a penalty decision in the semis. But the less said about that, the better. I don't want to get in trouble. What do you want me to get me in trouble? Tell him G. 3. Austria <sighs> Man, I won't lie. Of all the 24 sides, Austria are probably the best example of a team who deserved to go further than they actually did. They were terribly unlucky against France, pretty much ran over Poland and had too much gas in the tank for the Dutch, ending the group stages deservedly in first place. But then, we got a classic example of just how cruel tournament football can be. Cause come on man, these guys switched up for like what? 20 seconds and all of a sudden they find themselves 1-0 down in the first minute of a knockout tie and thus desperately chasing the game and doing so against possibly the only underdog team in this tournament that were even more impressive than them. Which leads us to number 2 Turkey. While they lacked the energy and sheer shock factor of the 08 side, this Turkish team made up for it with far more genuine quality. With a young and fluid attack led by Real Madrid teenager Arda Gula, these guys simply did not care who they went up against, be it the players, the staff or the fans, Turkey always bring it. And number one, Spain. And not just because they won it. I mean of course them winning it does help their case. But you know what cast your minds back to about a month ago? Mid-June. How many of you actually expected Spain to put up a realistic challenge let alone win the thing? Because honestly as talented as they were and are, the general consensus was that not only did they pale in comparison to where they were during the golden era, but they were also seen as a little too young of a team. But boy, boy did the youth do them good this tournament. 
And yes, I'm talking about Nico Williams. I'm talking about Lamine Yamal. But to be fair, even if you look past the obvious names, the majority of them did their job to a very really high standard. Though I do think giving Rodri the player of the tournament was a bit much. But either way, that motherfucker doesn't lose, does he? So annoying. And while all that is good and dandy, personally, I'm probably most thrilled for Alvaro Morata. Man, the guy often gets way more slack than he actually deserves and seeing him lift a European championship while well, as an entire experience was agonizingly painful as a one-off moment it was pretty sweet to tell you the truth and as for this Spanish team listen make no mistake they obviously still have a lot to do to even go near the levels of their predecessors of the recent past but if this tournament is any indication of what's to come then these guys can too be very well on their way to dominate the international landscape for years to come and that is that. Agree or disagree beats indifference. Once again, don't forget to like, comment and share. And of course, subscribe. Till next time, you keep rolling.